So now in this video, we're moving on to the uh, 555 timer in this uh, quick video series. And so I'm just going to quickly put the circuit together, briefly explain it. But in uh, any case, the output here, it is stable in two positions. That's what bi-stable means. We have to press a switch to change the output. And so this is the set uh, switch right here. It goes to a pin 2. When we connect that to ground by closing the switch, the output, if it's low, will go high. If it's high already, it'll just stay high. But in any case, sets the output high. When the output is high, pressing the reset button will set it low. And then it'll stay low. It's stable. We have to press a button to make a change. Holding down the reset, though, will make it low no matter what. The reset overpowers anything. So you got to make sure you release it before you hit set again. You may have noticed this capacitor on the board a little bit ago. It's a 100 microfarad capacitor. I'm putting it to the rail. It's not on the schematic here. Sometimes you do see capacitors like this on the uh, schematic. All this is doing is if I bump the power supply or something, it kind of spikes the voltage and that throws off the 555 timer. That will hold the voltage to the rail steady long enough to prevent it from falsely doing anything. So now we'll get to the build. A couple of things here. We have to power this. Pin 8 goes to the positive rail. That's a pin 1 there. Pin 2, 3, 4. And then once you get to the bottom, some integrated circuits are longer. But then you jump across and continue your way up. So 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, usually on the schematic diagram, you'll see the 555 number to indicate what the box means, what the integrated circuit is. And they'll just put the numbers of the pin on there. So that makes it uh, pretty simple. But in case, we got VCC to a pin 8. And then ground to pin 1 right there. That's how you always power the 555 timer. So pin number 6 right here, you can see goes to the negative rail. It's actually waiting for 2 thirds or more of the supply voltage. By going to the negative rail, that's 0 volts. That's less than a third. And uh, so it's a lot less voltage and it needs to do something. So it doesn't do anything. We're telling it not to do anything. Now, you can see here that uh, I already have the uh, switches on the board and so just because we've already done videos with switches no point uh, going over them again in detail when we've moved on to 555 timers and so we have one of the switches going to pin number two up here that's the trigger pin and then pin number four that's the reset pin so I got set here for the switch and reset that is a reset pin, but that's a trigger pin, not a set pin. Uh, that's just what I named the S switch for this video. So you can see the other side of the switch goes to the negative rail. Pretty straightforward. That would give us a low signal to either of those pins when we push them. So now we don't want to leave those pins floating. They're going to pick up stray signals. Sometimes they'll be low, sometimes they'll be high. So they'll be flickering on and off really quickly, about 60 times a second. So I've done a lot of other videos on that topic. Not going to go into it in detail. So this is a 10,000 ohm resistor, pull-up resistor. That's a common value, exact value, not terribly important. These input pins don't let current in or out. They just look at the voltage. And so really what this is doing, it's holding the voltage high, so 5 volts, until we press the switch. Then we'll have a direct connection to the negative rail. So you'll have a little current leaking through there. And uh, so... You don't really want it to be a low value resistor, but uh, 10 kilo ohms just works nice. So, in any case, we'll uh, grab this one and do the same thing with the switch that goes to pin 4. So now, they'll both have a high signal, 5 volts, until we press the uh, switch. Then it'll be connected directly to ground. Again, we could shuffle these to where the pins are, but it'll get a little cluttered. Now, we will go to the output. And uh, we got the circuitry all done. We're just going to have our output here, which does something interesting, lighting up LEDs. I'm going to take the green one and uh, go from the uh, positive supply to the output. Or you can think of the output towards the positive supply. In any case, this uh, long lead, the LED needs to be on the more positive side. That's what that is, long lead anode, and then short lead cathode for there if you haven't trimmed them. So there's a jumper to the positive rail. So I'm connecting the LED to that instead of the resistor. I'm going to take the resistor and then put that. This is a 1,000 ohm resistor, 1 kilo ohm. It's going to be a higher value than the one 
uh, for the red LED. So you can pick any values you want as long as they can protect them. We're going to use 5 volts here. So 220 ohms is the minimum. Green LEDs just get brighter. Plus it's uh, this sinks current better than its sources. So that will help the green LED get brighter. So we're going to use a higher value resistor to limit its brightness. So red LED, same thing. We have the output headed to ground. But I want the LED away from the output just because it's cluttered right there. So I'm going to shuffle it down here. So short lead the cathode goes to ground. I have this jumper right there to ground. Long lead the anode is going up one row. And we have that connection there. Now I'm going to grab the 220 ohm resistor. So it actually doesn't output the uh, full voltage. It's about a volt less approximately uh, when it outputs the high signal. It does connect directly to ground when it's low though. So we got more uh, voltage across the low that way than that way, unfortunately. So we're going to use a lower value resistor. So again, topics I covered in detail a lot in other videos, and the power's on. So I didn't realize that. So we'll uh, kind of went in at an angle, so now the resistor's not happy. But in case, there we go. Good enough. So I got the power supply there. So it went to the output right there. I'll fix that resistor later. We uh, got both resistors to the output right there. And the power is on. So I meant to turn it off. But in any case, let's turn it off and on. And the green LED came on. So if the green LED doesn't come on right away when you plug it in, maybe it's because the power supply was already on. So we hit that button. Now the output changed. So that's the set pin. That set the output high. I know that because we have the red LED there, it goes to ground. When I hit the reset pin, that sets the output low. I know because that side of the LED is more positive and ground is more negative. We got the low there. And you can see the green LED is brighter, even though more uh, less current is flowing through it. You can see we got seven milliamps uh, total with the, uh, the red LED and then green four milliamps total and it's it's brighter so any case that's really it for this circuit for the quick demonstration of it so hope you enjoyed it i got more 555 timer circuits coming up the three basic ones and then i'm going to throw in a bonus one that i really like that's a pretty simple too so hope you enjoyed the video check out the other videos that i'm posting make sure you subscribe and uh, click the bell click like i will see you in the next video